Hola! How are you? I'm back and look at I'm smiling! Um, I wanted to thank you for all your so so sweet um, I got emails, I got comments, um, just you guys really really helped me out a lot and gave me some really great advice and I've spent the week really just reflecting on uh, God's goodness and what he's already done in my life and I'm at a really good place and I like I said sometimes it just takes me a little while to go to get a little adjusted to change and then when I do I'm okay and I wanted to say I'm more than okay so today I'm really super pumped about the video for today today I you've probably seen these um, all over the place and rightly so. These things, these ornaments are gorgeous. They're so, so pretty. And uh, surprisingly, they're a little time consuming, but they are not hard. And when something is this beautiful, time consuming is okay. Um, difficult sometimes is never really easy to do, but time consuming, I can do. Um, and so I had two classes this week and we made this ornament and we made this ornament. Isn't this so pretty? Oh my gosh. And then um, a third ornament that was exactly like this one, except we used designer series paper. So when I come back to do the video, I'll show you that one. But today I wanted to show you to show you how we put this one together. And um, there's no stamping involved. And it's really kind of a cool twist on this one. So thanks for stopping by. I'm sorry the video is a day, and who knows when it, if it goes up Saturday, it's a day late. If it's Sunday, that's two days late. So I apologize for that. It's a crazy busy week. And um, Kevin, this was his last week of holidays. So uh, some things that we kind of thought on the timeline we'd get done, as always, kind of got shifted off a bit. So delayed a few things. So thanks for your patience. And I'll be right back to show you how to make that ornament. Okay, so I'm back and um, I can, I think I've just made peace with, I'm going to forget something every video and so if you're okay with it, then I'm okay with it. Especially today because there's a lot, there was a lot of stuff for me to remember, which means there's a lot of st hey, I just got a text, but I'm videoing so I don't video and text, so that will have to wait. Um, okay, so... What I was going to show you is um, how we made this ornament at the ornament class. Now, you'll notice this one, we didn't put tool on it. Um, and actually, during the first class, one of the ladies said, oh, it'd be cute to put tool in it. And I, as soon as she did that, I was like, wow, that looks awesome. So there's the one. I have to reach over and grab this one. Um, another text popular. Um, so this is the same ornament without tool and then with tool. With, without. Actually both are very, very pretty. It just comes down to a preferencing. Um, I'm going to show you the one with tool, I believe. Uh, so what I wanted to show you was what I used was the um, Festival of Prints designer series stack that is in the holiday mini as you can see I don't have much left I had to order some more uh, these are four and a half by or four and a quarter four and a half by six and a half um, and there's 48 sheets in the stack there are different patterns there are four sheets to every pattern which is perfect for making this ornament because it takes four of these exactly to um, to make this. So again, I'm going to lift up the stand a bit here. And it's okay, Kevin, exhale. I'm being very careful. Okay, so what you do is, and we talked about this with the framelits on my last video, your tab one and tab two are all in. You put your cutting pad down. I'm using um, this framelit from the uh, Christmas framelit, ornament, uh, ornaments, framelits, 
And I have all four sheets stacked up here, which is so great. Actually, you know what? I just remembered. Okay, we're going to try and see if this works. Because I remember this designer paper is just a little thicker than our regular. And it goes through four sheets of regular. But four sheets of this one is a little bit of a, of a stretch for it. So I'm just, I'm going to run it back and forth. What I had done before was I did three sheets at a time because I had a bunch of them to make, so I just stacked them in three. Um, so the first one goes this way, and then these will pop out. It just seems to be this little tail piece that has a little bit of a problem on that fourth sheet. Well, we did okay, so I'm very happy about that. So, keeping the four stacked, I'm going to do I'm going to go in at an angle and go real nice and tight up in there. And then, you know, I'm just going to let you know ahead of time. This video may be a little longer than usual because I'm going to take the time to show you how it all comes together. Okay. So, then that's my next four. I'll just put those off to the side. Okay, and then this one gets tucked in on an angle this way, nice and tight, and run it through that way. And then pop those out. And then, actually, I'll, I'll just show you, and then I'm going to pause it and come back when it's done. This one will get cut out this way, and then there's room for it to go this way, so I can get all five cut out. So I'll be right back and, and show that to you once it's done. And I'm going to check those text messages, too. Okay, I am back. So I went ahead and uh, put these two through the big shot, so you can kind of see the pattern um, in order to get... 20 of them because we need 20 um, so I've used all four sheets there and what I've also done is I'm going to show you how we now put these together so you will need oops those aren't oh yes they are <laughs> um, so you will end up with 20 of these you need to set five of these aside that haven't been folded so just pretend I have a stack of five of those there. The other 15 we're going to fold in half. So just fold in half and this is where you're really going to need um, the bone folder. This is really going to help make that sharp crisp line. So then what you'll do is take your Tombow and just put a little bit of glue down there and I love the Tombow because for two things. I have a little bit of time to readjust which is kind of my life story, readjusting. Um, and, but then once it's stuck, whoo, she's stuck, baby. So I've just glued all three of those together like so. Another little tip when you're using your Tombow, I just grab a small little measuring bowl and keep my Tombow in there as I'm using it. That way the glue is always at the tip uh, rather than always having to shake it down. It's just going to sit in the tip naturally. Okay, so then you'll take that piece that you didn't score, and that's just going to cover up the back. Now, it's only a preference thing. You can either glue this backing and then put it on, or I just, this is the way I like doing it. So I put my Tombow on there, and then I lay the ornament on top, and then, oops, and then I can... Like I said, good thing. I had a little bit of adjustment time there. And then just make sure that's all lined up. So then that's what one of the five prongs, I don't know, what do you want to call those? These uh, will look like. So I've gone ahead and done um, the other ones. So these are all done. So then I'm going to show you how it comes together. Again, some people like to use, let me readjust here. Some people like to use the hot glue gun on this to attach the petals. That's what we're gonna call it. Uh, but I like to use Tombow because it gives me a little extra time. Um, the 
the hot glue gun tends to set a little quicker and that doesn't give me enough time if I want to readjust my petals of the ornament. So this is just gonna, that top part here, this kind of notched part, the bottom of that is just gonna line up with the bottom of the circle. This is a one and three eighths circle. And I just got these, uh, cause I, the first one I did, I used my bone folder to press into these spots. And by the end of it, my um, bone folder was covered in glue and I was very sad. So then I just went to the dollar store and picked up these little dowels in the craft section and my handy dandy super duper awesome amazing husband because they were really long cut them in half and um, and then they're just kind of the perfect length to get in there and just push those into the glue so I'll just kind of adjust it so that I looks fairly even to me and I'm pretty happy with that and now we're just gonna put the tool in so oh my fingers are all sticky you know what that was the other thing that Tombow is super sticky so that was the other thing I had baby wipes out for the ladies to wipe their fingers off um, so you're just gonna take this is the cherry cobbler scallop tool which is drop dead gorgeous and I've just cut three scallops poke your finger up through the middle and create kind of a little I said to the girls, remember making ghosts with Kleenex? It's almost that idea. And then put a good hefty dollop of hot glue gun in hot glue in there. Again, use your your um, stick, your dowel, and just push that into there. I should be working on my um, What's that called? My silicone craft sheet, which is, oh my gosh, that thing is amazing. For $7.50, it, it was amazing. And if I didn't see it demonstrated at convention like I did, I think I would have overlooked it. But thank goodness for convention that I didn't overlook it. So those are just, these are all just going to go in between each of these petals. So once again, I'll pause it. I'm going to grab my silicone sheet for that reason, and then I'll come back and show you with all the... Oh, look at how much I... <laughs> Don't throw up. I'm sorry for moving it so much. Um, I'll be back and I'll show you with Again. all the tools. And uh, I put all five of my tool, uh, cherry cobbler tool, and I was just going to also mention, you're going to end up with all those little spider web uh, strings of hot glue. Don't worry about those. Let them cool and get, you know how they get kind of hard and crispy? When it's all done and it's all cooled, those will just pop right off. So the next thing that we're going to do just to finish this off, and again, I don't know if I just said this, but if you were going to do this one, you would not obviously do this step of the tool. If you wanted to do this one, then you will have added the tool. So this is the champagne glimmer paper. Oh, it is just like mesmerizing. I love this. And I used the new snowflake die that is in the holiday mini which gives you this image, this image, and this image all in one die. And what I did for this one was uh, I put a nice big the technical term of glob of hot glue in the center and then I took brought over my snowflake and used that stick again and actually kind of push it in and it forces you see how it kind of raised those the snowflake again whatever word you want to use for that kind of made the snowflake um, pop up on the ends and yeah I just pushed my finger into the hot glue gun and I'm trying not desperately not to cry um, then what I did was I took three glue dots on the back of the next um, snowflake and the reason I did that is because we've kind of pushed in concave um, we need to kind of have some height there in order for that to stick. See how just how nicely that sticks in there? And then I put one glue dot, or one, I'm sorry, one dimensional on the back of the smallest snowflake. And you can 
sort of see you can well you can see the snowflake the dimensional but that doesn't matter because we're going to use <laughs> hang on it is right here it's, it's, I did forget something but it's just right here um, the faceted buttons the mesmerizing catatonic lovely faceted buttons so I put a little dollop of hot glue gun of hot glue and just press that into the center. Another little tip, and you know when I give you tips, it's not because I've thought of it ahead of time, it's because I've actually made the mistake and now I'm sharing it with you. The buttons have holes in it as if it's going to have thread, so don't push down like this because you'll push the hot glue onto your fingers just like I did. <laughs> and then instead of a jumbo pearl, we used a the largest rhinestone in the center of this one, just like so. Okay, and then just to quickly finish it off, take a look at it, see which side of it you kind of go, oh, I like the way everything kind of hangs like that on when it's looking that way. So I think I'm going to pick this way. So all you do is fold back kind of the wings of that um, ornament till it's flat pop in your hole punch. Just a tip, make sure that you have it, you've cleared the end of this. You don't want to put your hole and just clip off the end or have it so that you don't have a, a nice clean hole to put the uh, ribbon in. This is using 1 8 Berry Vanilla Taffeta Ribbon and just tied a simple knot on the end because I'm all about the simple. <laughs> just ask my family. And then just trim off your ends on an angle just to purdy it up. And then just on the back to cover up this, um, just this one and three eight circle, which is gumball green in this case. I just used uh, Perfect Punches in Cherry Cobbler on Very Vanilla cardstock. Punched it out with the one and three quarter scallop circle and then pop that on. Now the reason I waited till the last to do that is because I want to pick which way I want the ornament to hang and then put that on rather than if I would put it on say I would put it on this way but I decided I wanted this one to show then my joy of, at Christmas would have been upside down. Okay so that is that ornament in a nutshell and I forgot it is upstairs and I'm not gonna run upstairs to get the one that I did that is like this with DSP, but I will post that picture of that ornament on my blog. And I'll post a still photo of this one um, tomorrow, so you can see what this, the two still ones look like on the website, uh, on my blog. So, thanks for stopping by. I know this was long. You guys are amazing. Thanks for sticking with me. I love you. Good, okay, bye-bye. Go and see you. Ah, ah.